Hello, I'm Dr. Anil Gode. I'm a consultant at Fertility Plus, Fertility Courses and Homerton Fertility Centre. So today I'm going to talk to you about the role of HCG in natural frozen embryo replacement cycles. And the question is why? Again, HCG has been used for probably the last 20-25 years and quite effectively we know its deficiencies are there as a trigger, but we also know that its positives are there as a luteal phase support. And today we'll have a look at this on a retrospective study, which looks at how HCG may support the luteal phase and especially the early luteal phase. So what did this study look at? This study looked at what luteal phase support is available with HCG given one day after LH surge in a natural FET cycle. And again, this was quite a big study using euploid embryos. Natural frozen embryo replacement cycle relies on endogenous hormones. And in the clinic, the protocol was to use vaginal progesterone after embryo transfer. And in fact, it's not really needed. And a consultant in that clinic used to use HCG as luteal phase support on day 18 and day 21 and found anecdotal good results. So again, frozen embryo replacement cycles, euploid embryos, 529 natural frozen embryo replacement cycles, follicles tracking done, E2 and LH measured, three to four days prior to ovulation daily LH levels done and LH rise was defined as any LH greater than 17 international units per litre. So two groups, group A a bolus of HCG 3300 a day after LH surge was given if a BMI was more then HCG was slightly more and in group B no trigger was given. Both groups received vaginal progesterone. The ongoing pregnancy rate with the HCG trigger was, or HCG boost, was 69.9%, while that with no booster was 57.4%. Biochemical loss was very much the same, and first trimester loss was very much the same. If you look at the amount of HCG given, whether it was 2,500 or 10,000, the results were very much similar. And even if you look at the morphological assessment of embryos, the boosters seem to be beneficial even in top quality embryos. And the, let's look at this. Why did I choose this talk? And I chose this talk because for a couple of reasons, because I believe that in the luteal phase, HCG may have a role to play and in nature it certainly has a role to play where HCG starts allowing the prolongs the life of the corpus luteum. Now there's no other way of prolonging the life of the corpus luteum other than with an ongoing pregnancy and that's what HCG does. So if you have a look at the study it was this was based on multiple studies and we don't have a right answer. So Fatemi looked at this study and said that HCG when it was given to spontaneous trigger, the results were slightly lower and multiple papers just did not find much difference or some papers found difference. So there's not much agreement. And in this study, rather than using HCG as a later luteal phase support, HCG was used just after the LH surge. And spontaneous LH surge was also used. So what is HCG now? And let's look at the pharmacodynamics of HCG. It so has a long half-life, eight to nine days after injection, you can still detect HCG and it activates the LH receptor. So that's where its positive effect lies. And there's a downstream effect of LH and HCG tend to differ. Now, HCG binds more potently to cyclic AMP and activates it. And it signals a slightly higher progesterone levels 
from granules as cells. So if we compare it to natural LH, you, you may probably be able to see a higher progesterone levels. On the other hand, LH is also quite a, gives quite potent activation with cell regulators during follicular genesis. So think about this again and think about it in stimulation. And in stimulation, if you're going to give it a dual trigger at times, and especially when there's no risk of overstimulation, you're going to use the benefits of a natural surge as well as the benefits of HCG. So going back to HCG, and we know that HCG promotes longevity of the corpus luteum, it may signal to the endometrium of a future blastocyst implantation, foster growth, and estab establish the placental villus differentiation and HCG biosynthesis begins early in embryo development and HCG is detected in very high concentrations in the uterine cavity prior to embryo implantation and maybe uh, exogenous HCG may facilitate or promote this. So this study has its benefit, it has a large sample size, genetically euploid embryos were used Yes, it has a deficiency of being a retrospective study. And again, no negative effects were seen in this study. So in summary, what, what are we learning? We're learning that HCG does seem to support the early part of the luteal phase. And in a natural FER cycle, maybe giving HCG may help. But again, this will all be tested on larger studies. But it does give us, start giving us an idea whether the luteal phase support may be extended in natural cycle FER and whether it allows the corpus luteum to survive better. And again, where would I think of using this in terms of progesterone? Maybe in ovulation induction cycles, maybe in cycles where you have a spontaneous LH surge and we say don't give HCG and I'll think I'll say, why not? And I often do that to my patients and say, you've had a surge, let's give you HCG because then it acts like an early luteal phase support. So a few points to think about. Uh, I hope you liked the talk. Please share it. And thank you very much.